Uh, oh, no. Yeah, uh, that's not cool at all. Damn. <laughs> that's not cool at all. That's really bad. Okay, we're going to get some more equipment here in just a second. But I'm going to get a screenshot first because this looks pretty gnarly, right? <laughs> Let's get some, some pictures first. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We're back at with more Emerge NYC. And today we're going to be doing some rural firefighting today, some volunteer firefighting. We got the uh, Stillwater brush truck. Uh, this is like a large majority of what you see around where I live is uh, brush trucks and kind of uh, a hodgepodge of uh, older equipment, stuff like that. They do the best they can with what they have. So that's what we're going to be doing. We just got a call for a house fire. So we're going to go ahead and hop into brush truck and head that way. All right, we're heading to the fire. We're responding from one of the uh, outlying stations, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So, I mean, this really is just kind of true to life. We'll, uh, we'll be heading that way, and we may even take some personal vehicles, too. I've noticed those on the map. I've never done anything with them, but we may take some uh, personal vehicles as well. I think that would be kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead. These roads are cra <laughs> they're crazy. It's like... Uh, a slalom course or something. They're so twisty and, and turny. Alright, yeah, here we are coming by the cistern. This is a really cool uh, feature here where you can get water. That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. Uh, I think they probably have those around here out in the uh, countryside. I know they got uh, ponds and stuff like that that they use a lot as well, too. So, Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, a great middle to your week here. It's, uh, it's halfway through, right? Thankfully. Thankfully, the week is halfway done already. It, you know, it hasn't been too bad. The kids were out of school on Monday. Uh, they started back Tuesday, so they kind of had a little bit of a reprieve. All right, we're here already. Nice. All right. Um, let's see, let's just pull it right here, man. It is fully involved. It is for sure. All right, let's uh, let's get some other stuff here too. Let's get a personal vehicle. Let's do that. All right, of course, I just got called out to the fire. We're at our house, so we're going to jump in this uh, rather nice-looking Dodge Ram. Get things going, and I thought the uh, fire department, though, I, I kind of thought they were supposed to have red lights. I'm not even sure if these are actually supposed to be uh, for that, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to take these out like they are a personal vehicle. Go ahead and get rolling here. It's a really nice neighborhood back there. I wish, uh, I wish we would have more, uh, more. Man, I'm on the gas like crazy. It's barely moving. Uh, I wish we had more house fires, more structure fires, in, uh, in that area back there. Uh, there's tons of potential for fires, and I've always said, uh, you know, I think new fires and situations and stuff like that are crucial for maintaining, uh, you know, people's interest in this game. Instead of just being the same thing over and over again. All right, here we go. We're at the scene. And, oh, I don't know why it's doing that. It's, uh, being a little bit weird. All right, let's uh, get one more uh, engine here and we should be good to start. All right, we are in the old school. Stillwater engine 102. This is, I know, I, I've i been around a truck exactly, or I'll say an engine. I, I mean, I consider them all trucks. They're all trucks, but I know a uh, truck is a ladder and engines and engine and all that. Anyway, I have been around one like this when I was a kid. Uh, I had a friend that uh, his dad was a volunteer firefighter, and uh, we went to the station a couple times, and they had one exactly like this, except it was the uh, lime green. So that was pretty cool. All right, we're here. Uh, let's go ahead, and uh, we'll get started putting this fire out real quick. Looks like someone's little vacation cabin is done caught on fire. Let's see. 
get around here and get a water supply going. And I'm thinking, yes, the <laughs> the uh, trusty hydrant wrench always there on that uh, back rear corner. Uh, let's see, can we get? Uh, where's our supply line? I don't ever know what. Uh, uh, I don't ever know where the supply line's at. <laughs> it's like it's on one spot on one. And here it is. We went right by it. And then on one spot on another. It's never, uh, it's not standardized at all. Which is probably true to life. Like, you never know. Gotta get familiar with the equipment. Alright, let's get the hydrant going. Let's drop the wrench over here. And... Get started. We need to, uh, I guess we'll pull in the tack line. It's cool to be able to do this. It really is. Uh, like I said, it's it's a large bulk of uh, firefighting in the United States. Is this right here? The uh, you know rural volunteer fire departments don't get paid a dime. You know they do it uh, strictly as a, a free service, and uh, they don't. They definitely, by far, do not get uh, the greatest equipment either. They get a lot of hand me downs and and stuff like that. So. All right, let's, uh, let's get water going here. There we go, nice. This is a good fire here. I've always kind of liked this one. It's always uh, well involved when you roll up on scene. All right, let's start spraying her down good here. At least we have a hydrant right here in you know in front of the fire. Like now, that's rare <laughs> for a rural fire department. That's rare. Because uh, usually you don't see fire hydrants out in the county, only in the city, so that helps a ton. That helps a ton. Go in here. And I remember growing up as a kid, my family had actually uh, two forest fires on uh, my family's adjoining well one of them was actually on my parents land someone was burning leaves and uh, the wind got into it and got it out of control and my dad had just cleared a big huge field with a bulldozer and had piled all the trees up in the middle and they'd been sitting out there for a year at least and uh, they were good and dry and that fire spread down into that big brush pile it was huge and uh caught up and so we had the fire department had to come out and um they didn't put it out they just kind of contained it and let it do its thing and it it burned and smoked for uh for days for days on end and then we had another one uh there's a, a forest fire on our neighbor's land and uh the fire department stopped it before it reached ours like they used a, a logging trail there was a logging road that uh basically separated the property, you know, our property from our neighbor's property. And uh, the fire department went in and, and stopped it on that logging trail. And I never forget, they uh, they went down in there, they stretched a hose line down at this one point right off the road and the firefighters went down there. And next thing you know, they come running back and they said there was a rattlesnake. And uh, one of the police officers went down there and shot it and killed the rattlesnake. But, so there's no telling what you see, right? When you're doing this kind of uh, firefighting. And we're still, we're not having much luck. It's going pretty good. And it's like right here at the door. And I know I mentioned the big uh, wildfire the other day that we had here in the panhandle. And one of the craziest things, you know, talking about how wildfires affect uh, uh, wildlife and stuff like that. One of the craziest things that I, I saw was uh, the next day after the fire, right, we went riding around out into the countryside where this uh, fire had burned. This is one that burned half a million, almost half a million acres. It's 400 and something thousand acres. Uh, and it was crazy. You go out and it was just like a Martian landscape. As far as I could see, it was just dirt, just literally just dirt. And uh, power poles were like just burned off at the ground and hanging. It, but the craziest thing that I saw of that, like we have a little bit of an antelope population where I live, right? There's a few. You see them every once in a while. They uh, they were, of course, running from the fire. And antelope can book it, right? Like they can move really, really fast. Oh, shoot. We're getting burned here. Get our air on, too. 
They were running so fast across the countryside to get away from this fire in the smoke because the smoke preceded the fire because of the wind, right? The wind was pushing everything in one direction. They were running so fast, I saw like three different instances of uh, antelope that ran into barbed wire fences and literally decapitated themselves on the fence. Like, we got a picture of one. I, I just, <laughs> I, I just, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life to, to think that they were running that fast and had that much momentum and, and, and did that, you know. And of course, there were tons and tons of livestock that were killed around here too but uh it was very unfortunate but that's some of the things that kind of go along with wildfires that you don't think about so it's uh it's stuff you'll never uh you'll never forget all right i think oh no we got a victim in here shoot okay well we'll uh we'll see about him in a second let's keep putting some water on this and uh we'll check him out in just a second Man, it's smoky as hell in here. Let's see. All right, let's come on out. Let's get that off. Let's drop you down here, and we'll go inside and check this dude out. Probably going to pronounce him dead. I'll be honest. I don't want to bring the ambulance all the way out here and uh, try to take care of this dude. So we'll see. Let's uh, let's pick him up first. Carry him and get him out of here. It's so freaking smoky in there, man. I've done this fire a few times, and I've never seen anyone in there, so this is kind of new to me. We never say never, but... Oh! <laughs> no! We just threw him! <laughs> he's gone. Where did he go? Uh, wow! He's way out here in the woods! <laughs> what the... <laughs> no. Alright, well... Let's, uh... Let's pick him up again. Hopefully we won't body slam him on the ground again. That was... That was crazy. That was physics. Right, let's put him right here in front of the uh, fire truck. We'll drop him down here. Oh, he did it again. Like, you cannot drop this dude to save your life. Where'd he go this time? <laughs> I think he's gone. I think he's gone. There's no telling where he went. We may just have to say he was okay and he walked out on his own. I don't know where the dude went. Like, I completely lost him this time. Yeah, he's long gone. Anyway, uh, we're going to call this one good, guys. We're going to wrap this up. And uh, we'll see about working something else real fast. Get the uh, hydrant wrench. Close you off. And we'll put you away. That's get our spot taken care of. It's got you done. And let's close this up. Love this truck. This is such a sweet, sweet truck. It's one of my favorites. Someone was asking the other day what my favorites were. And uh, I said, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. That's a tough one. I like a lot of them. I like, you know, I don't really think there's any one particular truck that I just necessarily have a problem with. I like all of them, but uh, this one is super nice. I really like the lights on it and all that stuff. All right, we're back in the brush truck and... We just got called for a, uh, I think it's a single vehicle accident. On the main highway. On the, I guess this would be the interstate or something like that. I don't know. Either way, there's a car wreck. We're going to go check it out. Kind of based on some YouTube videos I've seen where some brush trucks have actually responded to, uh, I've seen videos where they've responded to car fires and wrecks and 18 wheeler. I saw one where they responded to an 18 wheeler fire and I was like, man, they are never going to have enough water to put that out. And I think they did. <laughs> I think they did. All right, here we are. We're at the wreck site here. Someone gave me a tip about the rumbler. Adding the rumbler to the siren with a G key. I did not know that. And I didn't know there's a train horn in the uh, in the game either. So it's cool that uh, people can give tips like that. There's still stuff. There's like stuff that I still don't know. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, uh, that's not cool at all. Damn. <laughs> that's not cool at all. That's really bad. Okay, we're going to get some more equipment here in just a second, but I'm going to get a screenshot first because this looks pretty gnarly, right? <laughs> Let's get some some pictures first. All right, of course, we got to respond in 102 again. Like I said, this is one of my favorites, so we're going to take it and maybe the uh, rescue spare too. I think that would be a good one to take. 
We'll just do the uh, old school flavor all the way around. Then we'll have to do the extraction. We'll have to get this person out of there. All right, there we go. We got this piece here. Let's get the uh, rescue spare. All right, we've picked up the rescue spare from its station and we're gonna take it. It's gonna take us a minute to get over there. Not quite as old school as 102, but still, uh, it's, it's definitely an older truck. There's no doubt about that. Been watching a lot of videos here lately on YouTube of the FDNY, like from the 90s, and it's crazy how old some of the equipment they had back then. There was one video I watched in particular that was about the Tonka truck, the, the ladder, the Tonka ladder, and, um... It was done in 93 or 94, right? And they were still in like a 1985 Mac. Uh, so their uh, their ladder was 10 years old. It was really cool to see. Uh, it, it's hard to believe like that stuff was that dated back then because you don't really think of it like that. Here we are on the main highway. Should be there in just a second. Now I'll bring this. Uh, of course, we'll need an ambulance for the victim, and uh, maybe we'll bring a sheriff's deputy too. Oh, come on, make up your mind, dude. Make <laughs> make up your mind. They always do that. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Park over here. Kind of close so we can get to some equipment because we're going to need the Jaws of Life and all that stuff. All right, let's do that. Uh, let's go ahead and get a Sheriff's Deputy as well. All right, we're responding in the Sheriff's. Uh, I think this is the Explorer. That's what I picked. Gonna be a minute. We gotta get through all these, uh, all these uh, twists and turns to get down there. This is the worst place ever to drive. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to see a map from the Midwest, just a big open map, uh, rolling hills, you know, uh, lots of straight roads, stuff like that, with uh, a little town and um, you know some houses scattered out here and there. That's the cool thing about where where I live is that uh, like the the different uh, fires that they see out here is crazy. They see a lot of different stuff. They see, of course, your uh, your brush fires, your wildfires, house fires every once in a while. They see a lot of equipment fires, harvesters and uh, uh, eighteen wheelers and stuff like that. And then they see, uh, because I live in a gas and oil area, they see a lot of well fires too. So. They uh, they see a lot of stuff that probably uh, some rural fire departments wouldn't see. Kind of cool, but anyway, we'll be here in just a second, and we'll do a little traffic control here, maybe. There we go. Park him right here. Nice. All right, and we'll need an ambulance. We'll go ahead and bring him to. We'll do all the things. All right, heading to the wreck in Medic 1. This is cool. I changed the siren up a little bit, so that's kind of neat. I did not know that. I totally did not know that you could do all that stuff. So uh, thank you, uh, the person that gave that tip. Thanks so much. I do, uh, I do appreciate it. Oh, that's different. I don't really hear anything like that around here. A little different. Let's change it up again. Let's go back to the uh, traditional one there. All right, here we are, main highway. Oh, oversteer a little bit there. All right, responding with Medic 1. 
We'll be there in just a second and we'll get the person out of the, uh, out of the car and maybe we can actually save this one. That would be nice, right? <laughs> to actually save this person. Hopefully we won't be throwing them across the map like we did the other guy. Uh, we'll roll up behind the rescue. Good enough. All right, let's hop in rescue, get going. Let's see what we got. Lots of blood uh, partially through the windshield. Sir, can you hear me? How you doing? Can you hear me? Uh, let's go ahead and we'll give him a C collar. We'll do that. We'll do the neck collar. There we go. All right. And now I guess we need to get the jaws of life and uh, start getting him out of here. Surely they have someone here. We got so uh, it looks like Jaws of Life right there, right? Yes. Okay. Spreaders. I guess they're not called Jaws of Life anymore. I guess they're called Spreaders. We can do it. Here we go. I actually remember when the town I grew up in, when they got uh, the Jaws of Life, it was kind of a big deal. It was a big uh, thing in the newspaper about it, about how they uh, they got it and they were trained and all that stuff. So <laughs> it's crazy. Spurs been around for a minute. Do it here. Maybe not. We're not. We don't seem to be having much luck. Right again. Hopefully this isn't going to re be a repeat of the locks. Like, we don't have the greatest luck with locks. Well. Here we go. Maybe that's going to get it. Nope. <laughs> well. There we go. Nice. Okay, we got it that time. Sweet. All right, let's put these back. It always had to put your tools away. Can we move the door? Like the door don't want to come off. Come on. There we go. Oh man, what a mess. Damn. Okay. Uh can we get a uh, backboard? Yeah, we need a backboard. Grab that. And uh, we'll gingerly move this person from the car. Good backboard. Sweet. That worked out. All right. Let's, uh, let's check him out again here and see what's actually going on with him. All right. He's not breathing. He's got difficulty breathing, but he's not breathing. He's got spinal fluid le leaking from his left ear. Fixed people. Semi-conscious. Not breathing. Facial lacerations. Minor burns. His breaths per minute are zero, and his temp is 90, so he's basically dead. He's more than having trouble breathing. <laughs> he's dead. All right, so let's see if we can bring dude back. Oh, he's also got a, uh, let's see, possible spinal neck injury. So yeah, he's got a, uh, a head injury. He's got a brain injury because his pupils are fixed and he's leaking spinal fluid. That's not good. Uh, and he's got a uh, broke arm. So let's splint that. That's splinted. On his good arm, we're going to give him an IV. So we'll do that. And what else can we do here? Uh, we can, since he's dead, we can intubate him. Uh, we can administer oxygen and probably give him epi to get him, try to get his heart going, maybe. We'll do that. And let's see, what else can we do here? Uh, let's hook him to the vitals monitor. Get that going. And then we're probably going to need to... Shock him. I, I remember how to get to that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's shock him. Oh, I heard it. There we go. All right. Nice. Okay. Let's see if that does anything. Yes, he's back. Once again, we... Whoa. Uh, well, his heart's beating, but he's not breathing. That's not cool. All right. Let's uh, close that out. We're not done yet. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's go to uh, back to H and let's hook him on a ventilator and let's see if that does anything for him. 
close you out. Let's close out there. Yes, he's back to breathing. Yes, uh, heart rate 55 beats per minute. His uh, O2 stats are 99%, which is really super good. Uh, he's got 20 respirations per minute, which I think is like exactly uh, average. And uh, his blood pressure is 82 over uh, 79 over 39 now. A little bit low. A little bit low. That could be from blood loss, though, because dude is bled out like no damn tomorrow. All right, let's see. What else can we do real quick? Uh, let's look at the drugs real quick. Uh, I think he's definitely beyond an aspirin and Tynol. He doesn't need an inhaler. He doesn't need glucose. Uh, not Ativan, Narcan, maybe morphine. Morphine might help him out. I'm sure he's in pain. He's got a broke arm and head injury and all that, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I really think we're good, guys. I think we've done just about everything we can here. Let's check him out one more time. Uh, 98 over 58. His blood pressure's come up a little bit with the morphine. I don't know if that's by design or if that just happened, but... Either way, it did. All right, so let's uh, let's see about getting him loaded up in the bus then. They got her stretcher. We'll load him up and get him out of here. This is a good, I'm kind of proud of this response, honestly. I really just kind of am. Like, that that was a pretty good one. Uh, I need to drop this. How do I drop you? Can't remember, there we go. And then uh, lower it. Then we'll move patient, let's see, how do we? I never can remember this stuff, like, move patient. Nice, okay, sweet. He's loaded up, left a little blood on the ground there. We'll have to wash that away with the fire truck, maybe. Check his vitals one more time before we ship him. Oh yeah, he's doing good. This dude's gonna be all right. He's gonna make it. He is for sure. All right, get you up. Grab the stretcher and load him up. Gonna call it good. This is a nice response. I really like this. All the uh, equipment here is really cool. I have to get some more screenshots. All right, buddy, we're gonna load you up and get you out of here. Been in a car wreck, but uh, you're okay. You're stable. Right, let's uh, return stretcher. There we go. Nice. All right, sweet. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope y'all enjoyed. I sure did. Uh, it was really cool to uh, do these kind of responses with the brush trucks and the old school stuff uh, and the wreck. I'm really happy with the wreck anyway. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I love hearing from you guys. It's 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 absolutely awesome. I love reading the comments. Also, uh, I want to thank everyone that has liked and subscribed and uh, supported the channel. It's still growing and climbing great. I, it, just, it still blows my mind. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Love all you guys. And we'll catch you in Montgomery County next time. Peace.